All right, as we've just seen, um, we have uh, many divisions on this topic, and one of them certainly the money. It's clearly one of the main driving forces between this kind of drilling, and there are billions of dollars to be invested, and the hope is that billions more will be made. And joining us now to discuss more on hydrofracking, Dennis Holbrook. He's the executive vice president of Norse Energy, which is based in Buffalo. Stuart Gruskin is the former executive deputy commissioner of New York's Department of Environmental Conservation, and he served most recently during Governor Patterson's administration. Also with us, New York State Senator Greg Ball, who is asking for a moratorium on hydrofracking, and Robert Moore, executive director of Environmental Advocates of New York and a member of Governor Cuomo's advisory panel of fracking. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Um, now, Kim just laid out um, the not just the environmental, but now also the economic concerns. And I'm going to start to go around the table, and I'll, I'll start with you, Stuart. Make the argument why this is a good bet for New York on the economic standpoint, the jobs, the revenue. Why, at the end of the day, is this good? If the environmental aspects are addressed properly, and I, I ultimately think that they will be, then we will see the economic development benefits and the energy benefits, which are real. Uh, there's and no question about it. do you no think they have been it. addressed? Do you think there's still a lot of open-ended questions about this? I mean, let me bring in Dennis for this. This is unprecedented, the volume of reaction, um, in this case from New Yorkers, that are sending in more than 60,000, 61,000 responses on feelings. And from the thumbnail sketch, overwhelmingly, they're not crazy about this. Well, I can speak as a company that has drilled over 600 wells in New York, the vast majority of which were hydraulically fractured. Uh, we've also drilled over 100 wells horizontally. So neither of those technologies is unique to New York or unique to my company. Uh, we have invested heavily in New York in terms of bringing manpower here. We brought people from outside of New York, from Texas and Pennsylvania. Great jobs program for Texas and Pennsylvania. And he well, just how about for New record. York? Are we uh, talking I'm a not lot sure of I jobs? followed the statement. Well, the great the jobs program for somewhere else? The no, the these are people that are living in New York State have lived here for several years and are contributing to tax dollars. They're raising their families here. And the expectation was we were going to double up on, on the existing employment. We brought almost 70 people here. We were making arrangements to double up on our lease space. Today, we're down to one third of that number. And the jobs aren't staying in New York now, they're moving out. You know, I think a lot of the claims that the gas industry makes, uh, like a lot of kind of misdirections, there's a kernel of truth uh, at the core of each of them. but. You know, when you when you peel back some of the layers, you find that the information doesn't always jive with 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 reality. The economics of the gas market right now, it's not clear how how profitable any of these wells are going to be. As a member of the advisory panel, we actually had a presentation by a representative of the gas industry, who did a, uh, a very you know simple calculation about what does it take for a, any given gas well to break even, and quite frankly. His conclusions, and this is an executive from a gas company, he basically showed us that most of these wells with current gas prices and current expected lifetimes of these wells over with one fracking simply are not going to make money. Anybody that listened to the food fight before or the back and forth now is left scratching their head. This is why Americans hate politics. In Albany, when you're sitting there, both sides that are unwilling to just have a very honest conversation. This is what I saw in Pennsylvania. I'm going to tell you why it upset me. I saw farmers whose lives were affected. I saw private property owners whose lives were trampled on. I saw sportsmen, fish kills, things that happened in Pennsylvania, and an industry that is absolutely unwilling to hold themselves accountable. We've got to focus on New York, with all due respect, Senator. You go to Pennsylvania and you get an anecdotal idea about what's going on out there. You're not a scientist. Can I just you say don't, anecdotal? You don't have, the, 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 level, just that, uh, you don't have yeah. the level of expertise that we have over at the DEC. You and I pay our taxes to support that agency so that yeah. they can use the science and yeah. use their expertise. The problem I have is what was just alluded to. We end up getting politics into this. You see a situation over there. You believe that what you're doing is right. You talk to a few people that are disgruntled. I talk to people every day in New York that say to me, I'm hoping to hold on to my farm. Can you get out here and have a chance to drill? New York has gone out and done the right thing as far as protecting the environment. But there needs to be the opportunity to move forward because otherwise you defeat the whole purpose. What's the point in having that type of four-year study and all the science that's gone into it if there are going to be naysayers out there going to say, well, I heard about something in Wyoming. I heard about something in Pennsylvania. 
that are dealing with less stringent regulatory schemes to begin with. All right, and Dennis, uh, we're going to pick this up after the break, and I want to remind the audience at home, um, we're going to be bringing you as well into our conversation. You see at the bottom of your screen here, our address to get involved. It's been up there throughout the whole program, and uh, Kim has been getting your comments here throughout this series, and we'll get to uh, some of the best ones here in just a little bit. All right, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation on the future of hydrofracking in New York. Please stay with us.